Hello and welcome back to Turner Classic Movies. I'm Ben Mankiewicz. Up next, the final film in our Star of the Month Spotlight on Movie Robots. And if you're not already in the Halloween spirit, this next picture will help you get there. From 1986, directed by Wes Craven, Deadly Friend. The story follows a teenage computer prodigy who gets involved with the girl next door and comes to her rescue when a tragic assault renders her seriously injured. Using his computer expertise, he implants a robotic chip into her brain, and she gets better, and they have like four kids grow old together and lots of friends. The end. Or maybe the experiment quickly backfires with catastrophic results. Deadly Friend was directed by Wes Craven at a high point in his career. Before the movies, Craven landed jobs as an English professor and then a humanities professor, first at Westminster College in Pennsylvania, later at Clarkson in New York. Craven made short films with a 16mm camera while he was a professor before making his directorial debut at 33 with a highly controversial, hyper-violent 1972 film, Last House on the Left. Craven didn't expect the movie to be widely seen, and negative reaction to its brutality set his career back. For five years, he worked as an editor and unproduced screenwriter before getting another chance to direct with a 1977 horror film, The Hills Have Eyes, which earned Craven a fan base that helped propel his career forward. Then, in 1984, just two years before he made this film, Deadly Friend, Craven struck gold when he wrote and directed A Nightmare on Elm Street, the movie that introduced Freddy Krueger to the world and launched one of the most popular horror franchises of all time. A decade later, Craven repeated his success with another successful string of horror films, directing the first four movies in the Scream franchise. Despite his reputation as a master of horror, Craven did not set out to make Deadly Friend as gruesome and shocking as it turned out. He conceived the film as a tragic teenage love story with elements of science fiction and horror, but the studio had different ideas. More on that after the movie. From 1986, starring Matthew Labrato and Christy Swanson, Deadly Friend. With Deadly Friend, director Wes Craven set out to make what he described as a tragic teenage love story. Problem was, the movie came right on the heels of Craven's first genuine hit, A Nightmare on Elm Street, the picture that made Freddy Krueger one of the most iconic and terrifying villains in movie history. When Deadly Friend was screened during production for executives at Warner Brothers, the studio felt it didn't have enough of the gore audiences expected from a Wes Craven film. Screenwriter Bruce Joel Rubin was forced to write six new scenes, including the nightmare sequence involving Samantha's father, the shock ending set in a morgue, and the infamous murder with the basketball. The studio really destroyed our love story, said Rubin, and everyone still blames me for that ending. That robot coming out of the girl's head belongs solely to Mark Tappan, and you don't tell the president of Warner Brothers that his idea stinks. Coming up. Noir Alley takes an even darker turn than usual as Eddie Muller brings us a noir horror hybrid from Argentina in 1953. Don't go away, unless, like most people, you don't like Eddie. In that case, you know, go wherever you want. El Vampiro Negro is next on TCM. <laughs> 